Shalom. I want to give all the praise, all the glory, all the honor unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, the Kakudash. Double honors goes out to the other apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me the truth. Also, I want to acknowledge Allah Akiyam, who are pushing the truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. Inshallah, to the elect of the nation of Israel. All right. This is Shabai from GMS Denver. I'm going to read in Ecclesiastes, a.k.a. Sirach, the 14th chapter, through the Spirit. I didn't, I didn't uh, you know, plan anything. Just really, tonight, just opened the, uh, the scripture and, and uh, decided I was going to, where I was going to read right here. So this is verse 1. It says, Blessed is the man that hath not slipped with his mouth and is not pricked with the multitude of sins. All right. So there's a scripture that says a slip of the tongue is worse than a slip of the, on the pavement. And really what it's going into is keeping the doctrine sound, you know. You don't want to be teaching... Oh, shit, what the hell? You don't want to be teaching, uh, you know, unsound doctrine. So when we're out here on the videos, on the, at the camps, every brother should pray, you know, that you always uh, teaching and... and and putting out the sound doctrine. You don't want to lead brothers astray or teach them the wrong way. Verse 2. Blessed is he whose conscience hath not condemned him and who is not fallen from his hope in Yahweh. Right. Don't fall out of this truth because you feel so bad. Of, of, you, see, you, you beat yourself up. Don't be one of those brothers who beat yourself up in, in your head all the time. Right. You don't want to have that woe is me spirit. You know. When you come into this knowledge and this truth, yes, we suffer. Yes, we go through hardship. Yes, we go through, uh, you know, pain. And, but the thing is, is we also got to remind ourselves of the balance. You know, we're the, we're the greatest uh, men on the earth. You know, those of us that uh, believe this, uh, this uh, truth wholeheartedly and sincerely. At the end of the day, we're, you know, we're going to be that governing body. In the kingdom, so don't don't have a, a spirit of uh, a woe is me spirit or beating yourself up all the time. That's that's not good to have. Verse three: Riches are not comely for a niggard, and what should an envious man do with money? All right, so you know that niggard word, it comes from the scriptures. You see, <clears throat> and when you go into the, I just looked it up on. Uh, on Google, it says it's a stingy or ungenerous person. Okay, let's see. So that's what that goes back to. That word niggard, all right? A mean, stingy, uh, you know, a niggard, all right? Verse 4. He that gathereth by defrauding his own soul gathereth for others. They shall spend his goods righteously. All right. So yeah, you you know I, we kind of went into this on our lesson on Tuesday. Um, you, if you're doing this truth and you, let's say you fall out, but you have knowledge, you know you're an Israelite, you have a little bit of knowledge of the truth, but you're not increasing it, and you're that one. Uh, let, let's go to it, um, Matthew. 25 and uh, let's see somewhere around let's see let's go into All right, this is talking about the wicked, slothful servant, the one that doesn't teach, the one that doesn't increase his fruit, increase his talent, right? Matthew 25, it says in 27, Thou oughtest therefore to have, this is Yahweh Shai speaking, Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto everyone that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away, even 
that which he hath. All right, so that's why it says right here, we go back to Ecclesiastes 14 and, and 5. He that is evil to himself, to whom will he, or I'm sorry, 4. He that gathereth by defrauding his own soul, gathereth for others, then shall spend his goods righteously. You see that? So if you're not gathering in this truth, you know, and you're not sincere and you don't endure, well, guess what? Whatever you do gather is going to go to the elect, the men who are really worthy and deserving of those goods. All right. Verse five, he that is evil to himself, to whom will he be good? He shall not take pleasure in his goods. Right. Because it's going to be given to someone else, a worthy man of the elect. There is none worse than he that envieth himself, and this is a recompense of his wickedness. And if he doeth good, he doeth it unwillingly, and at the last he will declare his wickedness. Right. So that at the last meaning, that's when Yahweh Shai comes back, you know, the second coming, and he takes away that talent, takes away that good, and gives it to, his, like I keep saying, uh, one of the brothers who's sincere, one of the brothers who's worthy, he's going to, you're, 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 whatever you have in this truth, if you don't increase in your fruit, if you don't do the work, if you don't, um, you know, uh, multiply the talent, multiply the, um, the money, right? Because it's actually, it's actually a parable like likened unto money and jewels and gold and silver. If you don't increase, well, guess what? It's going to be, uh, it's going to be given to another brother. At the, at the last, right? Verse 8, The envious man hath a wicked eye. He turneth away his face and despiseth men. And he despises the, the men of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai, true, the true men. A covetous man's eye is not satisfied with his portion, and in the iniquity of the wicked drieth up his soul. All right, you don't want to have a covetous spirit where you, 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 you're looking at other brothers and wish you had things that they had, or, or you know what I'm saying? Or even the wicked. Don't look at the wicked and wish you had what they had. You're supposed to be content with what Yahweh Hashem Yahshai has, whatever lot they've given us. Verse 10. A wicked eye envieth his bread, and he is a niggard at his table. Yeah, so you I mean you're stingy. You're going to be watching what everybody's eating. You invite the brothers to eat, and you're going to be watching the portions that they pour and the amount of uh, wine that they drink and you know what I'm saying? In your mind, you're despising it. That's that's wicked, my son. According to thy ability to do to, according to thy ability, do good to thyself and give Yahweh his due offering. Right, and, and we we said that you know in uh, in in the lesson. That's spiritual. I'm doing this lesson now because everything's popping up from our lesson on Tuesday. Which let's grab this. It's, everything's according to your measure. You know. For I say through Romans 12 and 3, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as the Most High hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For we, for as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. You see that? So do according to your ability, like we read in uh, Ecclesiastes 14. In verse 12 now it says <clears throat> remember that death will not be long in coming and that the covenant of the grave is not shown unto thee time goes fast man do good unto thy friend before thou die and according to thy ability stretch out thy hand and to give to him right so do good unto thy friend meaning another word for friend is brother right that word that word friend goes into brother so like, we actually have uh, brothers coming out. Uh, we just got word of it today on the group chat that, that the, the brothers, some of the brothers from Dallas are going to come back out and visit us. We've met some of the brothers from Dallas. So guess what? It's our, it's our duty to take care of them brothers while they're out here. You see, we're the host. You see? Stretch out thy hand and give it to them. That's what we're going to do when they get here. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to set them up in an Airbnb. We're going to take them out to eat. You know, we're going to fellowship with brothers, you know. 14. 
Defraud not thyself of the good day, and let not the part of a good desire overpass thee. Shalt thou not leave thy travails unto another? In thy labors to be divided by lot. Give and take and sanctify thy soul, for there is no seeking of dainties in the grave. Right. Balance. Give a little, take a little, you know? You know because when you die, you ain't going to be able to do any of that, you know? All flesh waxeth old as a garment, for the covenant from the beginning is thou shalt die the death. <laughs> so we're just getting older in our flesh, right? Brothers are getting older every day, man. And time goes quick. You try to tell your kids, right? You remember when you were young and your parents would tell you, hey, man, the older you get, the faster it goes. And now that brothers like me, I, I'm getting up, you know, a little older. You know, obviously we all are, but four, I'm 40, going to be, uh, you know, 48 already. It went fast. I remember 20 was, you know, blinking, It's and it's your 48, you know. <laughs> so, hey, this is our flesh waxing old like a gold garment. <clears throat> As of the green leaves on a thick tree, some fall and some grow, so is the generation of flesh and blood. One cometh to another and another is born. Right. And then we also know about reincarnation, regeneration. We come back every four generations. So, you know, this is our last lot, though, because we know we're in these last days. We know that we're not going to. You know, we're not more than likely, you know, and I say that with with confidence. Oh, shoot. It's not like my, I just turned my light off. Hold on. I can't see the, the scripts. I can see the phone, but I can't see the script. I read my script when I do these lessons, and so I can't see it right now. I got my light. I accidentally unplugged it. There we go. Back in business. All right. So... You know, we know about that reincarnation, regeneration. We won't be back. This is our, our last generation because Lord's will, this end is, is uh, you know, coming very soon, right around the corner at the doorstep, right? Verse 19. Every work rotteth and consumeth away, and the worker thereof shall go with all. Blessed is the man that doth meditate good things in wisdom, and that reasoneth of holy things by his understanding. He that considereth... And this is talking about wisdom. And that's what we do. When we get in this knowledge and this truth, we do meditate on this truth. You know? You're constantly meditating. You're thinking about stuff when you're driving. You're thinking about your stuff when you're at work. You're thinking about yourself when you're at home, when you're laying in bed. The, the men of Yahweh Hashem Yishah were in constantly in meditation mode. You, 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 you know, you can vision the destruction. You can vision... You know, you you know, you you start to think about things that the scriptures mention. You know, even the spiritual powers and so on and so forth. You know, you you meditate on all that, right? He that considereth her ways in his heart or in his mind shall have the understanding in her secrets, right? So we're the ones who get the understanding. Who we're the ones who gets the secrets, right? Amos three and seven. Surely Yahweh the Most High will do nothing, but He revealeth His secret unto His servants, the prophets. Right. And we're the ones who have the secrets. And secret, another word with secret is mystery. So the name, even the names are a mystery to these people. But guess what? We have wisdom and we have knowledge and Lord's will. We are those men, the prophets. So therefore, we are the ones who, who have the true names. And we're the ones who praise the true names. Right? It tells you in uh, Ecclesiastes 17 and 10. And the elect shall praise his holy name. You see? It's the Lord's will. That's us. All right. Ecclesiastes 14 and 22. Go after her as one that traceth and lie in wait in her ways. You, you see? One that traceth. Let's get that word traceth, like tracing, copying, right? See you chat what it It says a trace of something is just a hint or suggestion of it 
a very small amount left behind. See that? So we have just secrets and, and bits and pieces and coming into remembrance. But then we meditate. And guess what? All that tracing that we do, it, it comes to fruition. It comes to making sense. And because we're the men of Yahweh Shem Yashah, we are the servants, his prophets. Guess what? He gives us his secrets and his, and his mysteries. And so when we're tracing this, like meditating constantly, you know, being diligent, and guess what? We have the understanding on the, on life, on on the on the true life, which having understanding with his knowledge is really the breath of life that comes into us, right? That makes us alive. We were we were like the Walking Dead before we came across this knowledge, came across this truth. But when it's like that metaphor when Yahweh Yahweh breathed life into Adam, it was Adam was already alive. You have to understand when he when you go into the Genesis. Adam was already alive, but when he breathed the life into him, he was giving him understanding. That's what that metaphor was for. Doesn't mean he breathed into him and he had he had, he all of a sudden he was leave, living. No, it's talking about his understanding. That was the life, right? It just hadn't been documented like Moses during the time of Moses is when the knowledge and the truth was documented. You know the laws, the statutes, commandments. You see, verse twenty-three. He that prieth in at her windows shall also hearken at her doors. There you go. He that lodge near her house also shall fasten and pin in her walls. Right, so we, we value this truth. We're constantly trying to dwell with wisdom. And, the, and, and wisdom, if, if you don't know, is personified as a woman in the scriptures, right? The Sophia in the Greek, right? Verse 25. He shall pitch his tent nigh unto her and shall lodge in a lodging where good things are, right? So we make wisdom our home. It's our dwelling place, right? Um, so brings this into remembrance. I got I, the man. I got it where I wanted. All right, Psalm seventy-three and seventeen. Until I went into the sanctuary of the Most High, and well, actually, you know what? Let me start at sixteen. When I thought it was okay. Wait, no, nah, let's say fifteen. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Until I went into the sanctuary of the Most High, and then I understood I their end. Right? So that's what wisdom gives you. We're in the sanctuary of the Most High. We're in that, like it says, lodging where, uh, where pitch is tent nigh unto her. We're pitching our tent close to wisdom. So then we, guess what? We understand the mysteries. We like what, what, what King David, it's either Asaph or David's in this Psalm 30, 73. He's saying... He's saying, look, man, I, I, I didn't want to offend the people he was around until he understood the truth, until he had wisdom and he knew that two thirds were going to be destined for destruction and death. Then it says that's when he says because it was too painful for him when before he had wisdom to understand their end. And then he goes in verse 17 until I went into the sanctuary of the Most High, then understood I their end. See, so when you know the truth, then you start, okay, wait a minute, now we have wisdom, now we have understanding, so we know that two-thirds, and we know their end, we know that they're going to be destroyed, and guess what, even some of the people that we love are going to be destroyed, but if you didn't have wisdom, you would just have to deal with it, but since we have the wisdom, we understand the end of everybody, even the elect, we understand the end of elect, which are going to get saved and taken up in the chariot, we understand the the uh, the fate of the of the two third which is going to get destroyed and die in the nuclear fire if they get if they get that far you see because there's going to be lots of plagues and pestilences and and uh, you know calamities that is you know take going to take a lot of Israelites out and you know the heathen of course are going to get taken out that goes without saying so Ecclesiastes 14 and 26 it reads. He shall set his sons under her shelter, and he sh and shall lodge under her branches. Right, because it's the tree. Right, it's the men or the trees. And guess what? We're gonna we're gonna lodge in the in that shelter. Wisdom is our shelter. It's our protection. We we lodge under her branches. Right, she's she takes care of the elect. Right. By her he shall be covered from heat, and in her glory shall he dwell. There you go. And really, this is a metaphor too, because really at the end of the day, the true heat that we're going to be covered from are those nuclear missiles. 
that nuclear fire. And when, when you know, when we have this wisdom, it makes us more glorious, which that word glory goes into beauty. It's beautiful to have wisdom, right? Let's get uh, through the spirit. Ecclesiastes 8 and 1. Who is as the wise man and who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine and the boldness of his face shall be changed. Right? You see that? So that makes you glorious. When you have wisdom, you know, you don't have to be the most attractive dude. But people can see light and wisdom on a tree. Even if they don't agree with it, wisdom is wisdom. It could be on anybody. Well, true wisdom is only going to be on the, the, the elect, starting out the prophets. But the point I'm making is if somebody says something wise, they're immediately uh, more attractive, right? And you can be bold when you have wisdom, too. As a matter of fact, the, your face is changed into boldness when you're speaking wisdom. Why do you think the camps are out there on the street corners prophesying with authority and power, all right? So, you know, with that, I want to give all the praise, all the glory, all the honor unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rekakwadash, double honors, goes out to the other apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me the truth. Also, want to acknowledge all the Akiyam, we're pushing the truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. Shalom to the elect.